Today is Tuesday, July 15, 2014. It's the 196th day of the year. There are 169 days remaining until the end of 2014. Sunrise today is 5.20 a.m. The sun sets at 8.32 p.m. Length of daylight hours today is 15 hours, 11 minutes, 4 seconds. 1 minute, 33 seconds shorter than yesterday. Tomorrow will be 1 minute, 37 seconds shorter than today. The waning gibbous moon rises today with 88.1% illumination at 10.26 p.m. and sets at 11.35 a.m. Wednesday. The moon passes today above downtown Rutland City at 224,725 miles distant from the center of planet Earth within the 12th zodiacal designation, Pisces, the fish. On this day in 1240, the Swedish Novgorodian War is a Novgorodian army led by Alexander Nevsky defeats the Swedes in the Battle of the Neva River. 13th century Northern Europe is deep medieval with established spheres of trade and fairly decent relations between Sweden in the West and the lands of the Rus in the East. Trouble arises when, with crusader zeal, the Swedes want to do some conquering at Novgorod, the prosperous Rus city, to seize control of the trade route from northern Europe through Russia and Byzantium to the Greeks. The decisive battle on the Neva River on July 15, 1240 isn't chronicled anywhere until a hundred years later, and as far as the Swedes are concerned, the less said about it the better. But the short version is when the Swedes try to enter the mouth of the Neva River at St. Petersburg. They're rubbed out by an army led by 20-year-old Alexander Yaroslavich, Prince of Novgorod, who is thereafter known as Alexander Nevsky, you know, for the Neva River. All this happens just a few years before Alexander and his followers stopped the Teutonic Knights in the 1242 Battle on the Ice. On this day in 1799, the Rosetta Stone is found in the Egyptian village of Rosetta by French Captain Pierre-Francois Bouchard during Napoleon's Egyptian campaign. Napoleon gets lucky first in Italy, then in Austria, winning the loyalty of the demoralized French army by making sure everybody gets a little something to eat a couple times a day. It's Napoleon who says a good army fights on its stomach, like that idea is some kind of revelation. The directory goes along with Napoleon, the French empire grows a little something for everybody. Napoleon proposes an expedition to Egypt. He says it's a first step in a long-range plan to take on the British in India to pirate their trade routes, first in Egypt, where he envisions a canal through Suez. Crazy idea, but in the later 19th century, the Frenchman Ferdinand de Lesseps engineers the Suez Canal, connecting the Red Sea with the Mediterranean. Napoleon, he's ambitious. In Egypt, the French take possession of a 15th century Mamluk fort on the left bank of the Nile River in the delta on the Mediterranean, a few miles northeast of a town called Rashid, which the French, not all that fluent in Arabic, rename Rosette. Or as the English, not all that fluent in French, like to call it Rosetta. Napoleon calls the place Fort Julien for his aid. Captain Thomas Prosper Julien, who dies in the Battle of Alcombe there on August 2, 1798. It's there at Fort Julien on this day in 1799 that French Captain Pierre-Francois Bouchard, working with his troops on seaward defensive fortifications, finds a stone slab buried in the sand with incredible detailed inscription in three styles. Of course, Bouchard, while no doubt a cultured fellow, has no idea what the stone says on it but he does know the thing is old and valuable. The three scripts on the stone are at the top, hieroglyphics, the religious language seen on the pyramids in the center, the demotic ancient common Egyptian script used during the Ptolemaic period, which dates the writing on the stone, as used in, for example, business transactions or contracts. And at the bottom, ancient Greek. The inscription is a decree issued on behalf of the king in 195 BC, who would be Ptolemy V. The Rosetta Stone is a broken fragment of a larger inscribed slab. Maybe 14 or 15 lines of hieroglyphics are missing from the top. The value of the stone is because each script is the same text. By comparing one script with the others, it's considered that the Rosetta Stone is a key to translating ancient Egyptian script and even more ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. There are people who spend entire lifetimes trying to translate what it says on the stone written by the temple priests themselves. Something about uh, Pharaoh decreeing the temple priests are exempt from paying taxes and so forth, proving the historic precedent of tax breaks for the wealthy or laying the burden of supporting the conspicuously consumptive lifestyle of the rich and famous upon the backs of the working poor. Twas ever thus, brah. It doesn't go so well for Napoleon in Egypt. The French suffer humiliating defeat at the hands of the British under Admiral Horatio Nelson at the Battle of the Nile on August 1 through 3, 1798. Napoleon's flagship, the Orient, is destroyed in battle. Too bad, because it's a really terrific boat, as is most of his fleet. 
The French army, trapped in Egypt, endures continuing battle with the Ottoman garrisons there until a year later, with France at war with the British, the Austrians, the Russians, the Turks. Napoleon and his army march north and east, out of Egypt, through Palestine. The Rosetta Stone is captured as a spoil of war by the British, taken to the British Museum, where it continues on display there today. In 2003, Egypt formally requests that the stone be returned. To date, repatriation of the Rosetta Stone has not occurred. 20th century academic, author, and philosopher of communication theory, Marshall McLuhan writes, everybody experiences far more than he understands, yet it is experience rather than understanding that influences behavior. From Rutland, Vermont, this is Richard Alcott speaking.